In this video, we're looking at the causes of the current account. A little caveat here, deficit is what it says in the study design, but of course in the real world, we have a surplus now. So it's okay, we're gonna think about it exactly the same way. A lot of the resources will say current account deficit, and that's been the norm for 40 years, but now you're just gonna know in the back of your mind that it's actually a current account surplus, which of course means that all the credits, or all the credits on uh, the current account are greater than all the debits on the current account. So the study design dot point, if I go back, it's gonna take me a long time, but the study design dot point says, the causes of the current account deficit, including cyclical and structural factors. And broadly speaking, cyclical and structural factors are really our short-term, long-term factors, or sort of extending the demand supply factors, but they're a little bit different. But if that helps you understand it, structural supply, cyclical is demand. Cyclical short-term, structural is long-term. And what's important is that structural causes are stable because they're over the long term and they're really relating to how the economy is structured, like how what, how does the economy make made up. Um, and cyclical are referring to the short term because the business cycle moves up and down in sort of a repeatable pattern, remember the business cycle, um, in the short term. So let's have a look at them. So the structural causes, the main structural cause, the long term persistent cause of the current account which is usually in deficit, is the savings and investment imbalance in Australia. We've talked about Australia being really a young country relative to the rest of the world, and it's just really hard to get our head around how amazingly developed we are for being such a young country. Of course, a big part of that is that we've been able to borrow a lot of money from overseas and use it to build infrastructure and homes and apartments in Australia, or allow foreign companies to come in and build those for us. We get the benefit of having great infrastructure, but we have to remember investors um, don't loan us money because they love us and they don't invest in our country because they love our country. They do it because they want a return. And of course that return will show up on the net primary incomes when we pay back interest or dividends or profit to foreign owners. Now, I think it's really hard for you to understand. It's hard for me. I mean, I'm older than you, but it's hard for you to understand how much Australia has changed in terms of its built up space. You know, in class, I'll show you this city skyline. We have a beautiful city skyline. Um, but I want you to think about this picture here. This is the intersection between South Road and, uh, sorry, between, yeah, South Road and Nepean Highway. It's Moorabbin, it's Moorabbin train station there. And I think this is in the early 1920s. So, you can see Moorabbin here is like almost like a rural town. And to just get a visual on how much Australia has changed over the last hundred years, I think helps you understand why this savings and investment balance is important um, and why we have to pay back so much in interest. So of course now this, this has completely changed this area. It's built up with apartments and you know um, all sorts of buildings here. And that is due to us borrowing from overseas. There's obviously other aggregate supply factors that we classify as structural factors. So any of these factors here are going to hurt um, the supply side of the economy, um, restrict the growth in productive capacity, and that will lead to lower export sales. And also we may substitute to imports instead of locally made goods. Remember Australia is not very good at making cars. Um, and so we don't sell any cars, we import cars. And that obviously impacts the current account the net goods and net services, net goods, sorry. The other structural component is the international competitiveness, um, how well we compete, compete with other businesses around the world. Um, we want in international competitiveness to be high, which is obviously good for our exports. Um, unfortunately, Australia is not that internationally competitive. So that's a structural, long-term, persistent cause of the current account deficit now surplus. What are the cyclical causes? What are the short-term fluctuations causing a current account deficit or surplus? The first one is economic growth in Australia. Remember when we get this expansion, this green part in the business cycle, increasing consumption, investment and government spending. But remember whenever we spend, there's 20 cents of that, or whenever we spend a dollar in Australia, there's 20 cents of that dollar is actually going to imports. Of course, when we import things, um, 
that shows up as a debit on net goods or net services, and it impacts the current account in the short term. Also, overseas growth. So this is this is relating to imports, the growth in Australia. Overseas growth is relating to exports because when overseas economies that grow, they need more of our natural resources, our commodities, iron ore, natural gases, and coal. So when overseas economies grow, they buy more of our exports, and that obviously impacts our net goods and net services for you know tourism. At the moment, when overseas economies are slowing, like China, it's concerning because it means that there'll be less demand for our exports and there'll be less credits on net goods and net services. And finally, some other factors that would just influence the business cycle. So interest rates is important. It affects the um, exchange rate and obviously affects economic growth exchange rate, business confidence, we'll talk about terms and trade, but there's anything really, any factor really that impacts the business cycle is going to impact um, the current account. Now the current account you'll see, when we think about the, uh, the cyclical component of the current account, or the cyclical causes of the current account I should say, they tend to impact net goods and net services rather than any of the um, income sub-accounts. Whereas the structural component, particularly this first one, this obviously impacts the net primary income component. So net primary incomes has been the largest driver of the deficit in Australia's current account over the last 40 years. And obviously at the moment, or up in, you know, recently, some of the growth, uh, growth from overseas has been offsetting that and pushing us into a surplus. So you have to look at the sub accounts. All right, I might leave that video there. Really, we've just looked at the difference between cyclical structural and we've looked at what's driving the structural and cyclical changes. Bye for now.